Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we're going to begin here at 5 with the weather because here comes the chill. It is in the upper 80s right now. Come tomorrow, it's going to be about 30 Ooh. degrees colder. Quite a shift. Good to have you with us here at 5. We are welcoming in fall pretty quickly. Oh, we sure are. Let's set, start things off with Kim Adams. Again, those storms move through right on cue early this afternoon. Right on time, right during the midday hour. Now the cold front is still yet to come through. As you can see by the temperatures outside, it's still humid, but there's no energy to work with. So no thunderstorms, but temperatures are still in the upper 80s. It's hot, it's humid. But as we look back out to the west, here's the 24 hour temperature change. It is 24 degrees colder in Minneapolis right now than it was at the same time yesterday. And all that cold air behind the front is headed our way. So here's what we expect this evening. If you're going out, if you have baseball, football practice, it's still hot and humid. It'll take a while for this front to get through and that cool air to settle in. But once it does, it's in here big time. By midnight tonight, down to 71 degrees, it's tomorrow morning that we are 30 degrees or more cooler. 54 degrees at 8 a.m. Dry tomorrow with the exception of maybe a spotty shower. But the big story will be the temperatures and the wind tomorrow. 63 will be the high, but we'll have winds gusting to 20 miles per hour. Fall right on cue at 9.04 tomorrow night. We'll talk about Fiona plus your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Kim, our other top story at five, three teenagers have been charged as adults in the stabbing death of a 14-year-old in Frazier. And all three are charged with felony murder, which comes with a life sentence if convicted. Sean Lay, live in Frazier tonight. And Sean, you are also getting some new insight into exactly what happened here. Shocking turn of events. We continue to put the facts together here because people want to know simply what happened. Everyone we're talking about here is a juvenile. This happened after Frazier High School dismissed last Monday at a home right up the street from here. Today in court, police said four teens, two young boys, two girls with them allegedly forced their way into a home armed with knives. One of those teens who allegedly forced his way in was stabbed to death. We're told that was an act of self-defense. The other three with him, again, one boy and two girls in court today facing life in prison if they're convicted. People versus Isabella Bridges. In court today, a Frazier High School student named Isabella Bridges. We are told she is 15. You're seeing her because the Macomb County prosecutor is charging her as an adult with felony murder, felony home invasion, assault, and battery. Also in court, her friend and classmate, Emma Morgan. We're told she is 16 and she is also charged with felony murder, home invasion, assault, and battery. A 16 year old classmate of theirs, Colin West, his video arraignment was wasn't posted online. Frazier police will not release his photo. He's also charged with felony murder, home invasion and assault. Police say all three, along with Frazier High School freshman, 14 year old Trent Redstrom, forced their way into this home to attack two Frazier High School male teens and other girls who were there with knives. Force entry was made via the back door with all four of them. Um, several people were stabbed. Isabella assaulted two females, juvenile females within the home. As a result of the home invasion assault, Trent Redstrom was stabbed and died as a result of his wounds. In defending themselves, the teens under attack fought back. Trent Redstrom was stabbed and he died of his injuries. All of this, we are told, teens fighting over a girl. Threats being made on Snapchat. Now one teen is dead, three others facing life in prison. This is terrible what's happened here. Tragic, terrible, and unnecessary. Frazier, we're at the police department. The director of public safety is yet to speak publicly about this incident that happened right up the road here at all. We did meet with her to ask her more details about what happened here and why. Why would this rise to the level of a home invasion and homicide? We're talking about teen girls and teen boys. She said she would not release those details given the fact everyone here is a juvenile. Those details eventually released in court as the court now is uh, go in progress here, Devin and Karen. The three teens we mentioned are being held right now in juvenile detention. But again, we'll point out being charged as adults. Back to you. Sean, I understand you've been in touch with one of the victim's parents. A couple times, the parents who live at the house where all this took place right now, too stressful for them to add any details. They met here with police again today, but we're not willing or ready to talk about what happened. Understandable. All right. Thank you, Sean. We appreciate it. Okay.
Now to new trouble tonight for former President Trump. It has nothing to do with the documents seized from Mar-a-Lago, though Mar-a-Lago is implicated in parts of it. Today, New York's Attorney General moved to sue the former president and members of his family. Alice Barr has more from Washington. Alice. Good evening. Today's announcement only adds to the mounting legal troubles against former President Trump, and he and his allies are sharply pushing back. In a sweeping new lawsuit, New York Attorney General Letitia James accusing former President Donald Trump, three of his adult children, and the Trump Organization of a, quote, staggering pattern of fraud. No one is above the law. The 220-page suit details allegations that the former president lied to lenders and insurers for more than a decade in a scheme to inflate his personal net worth by billions of dollars and secure better loan agreements. Claiming you have money that you do not have does not amount to the art of the deal. It's the art of the steal. James wants a judge to permanently bar the Trumps from running any New York company or receiving loans from any New York registered bank for five years, and she's seeking $250 million in penalties. Nobody goes to jail as a result of this. It's a civil lawsuit. That also means that she has a lower burden of proof at trial. James says her years-long investigation did uncover criminal activity, that she's referring to federal prosecutors in Manhattan and the IRS. She alleges 200 instances of fraud over 10 years, including Mr. Trump falsely claiming his New York apartment was more than triple its actual size to make it the most expensive in New York history. The former president on his social media dismissing the claims as a witch hunt and calling James a, quote, fraud who campaigned on a get Trump platform. A Trump attorney insisting no wrongdoing has taken place, accusing the AG of an unchecked abuse of authority. James, who is running for re-election in November, pointed to two judges dismissing the Trump team's claims that the investigation was politically motivated. On the criminal side of this, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office said today that its investigation into the former president and the Trump Organization is active and ongoing. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, the lawsuit also names Trump's daughter Ivanka for her role in securing a loan to buy Doral Golf Course in Florida along with other properties. New at 5, Detroit police are working to figure out who shot and killed a 70-year-old on Detroit's east side. Police found the man this morning at a home on Camden, not far from I-94 in Dickerson. Victor Williams was in that neighborhood today as police began their investigation. Well, police are in the early stages of the investigation. This entire street was blocked off hours ago as officers searched for any evidence they could find to lead them to who exactly would want to do this to a 70 year old. Um, it is terrible. The neighborhood is still processing the death of a senior citizen that was shot and killed at a home on Camden Wednesday morning. Adam Taylor Joseph Garland saw the aftermath of when the fatal shot was fired. We heard the detective knock on the door. We saw the ambulance and all of that. The 70 year old victim was discovered around 8 a.m. with the gunshot wound to the chest. Police are now trying to figure out who pulled the trigger and why. Sadly, Brianna's grandmother lives very close nearby. That's honestly sad. It shouldn't have happened at all. Police and first responders tried everything they could to save the man, transporting him to the hospital where he later died. Makes it even worse, man. Yeah, way worse. The motive behind why someone would want to do this to an older man remains a mystery. Hope he get justice. At the end of at the end of the day, you know, we need it. Well, Thank prayers you. and um, condolences to his family. And 1-800-SPEAK-UP, that is a number that you guys have heard over and over again for Crime Stoppers. So those with any type of information on what happened to this man or who may be responsible are asked to dial that. And remember, of course, you will remain anonymous. Victor Williams, Local 4. We'll hope someone does. All right, Victor. The Federal Reserve hiked its key interest rate again today in an effort to fight inflation. The Fed raised rates by three quarters of a point for a third straight time. So the idea behind today's decision is to get people borrowing and spending less, which in turn could bring down prices. But it could also cause economic pain for millions by pushing up the cost of borrowing for like things like homes and cars and credit cards. The Fed signaled more sharp rate hikes could be coming. 
President Biden spoke to world leaders at the United Nations today. He defended Ukraine as Russian President Vladimir Putin makes nuclear threats against Europe. This war is about extinguishing Ukraine's right to exist as a state, plain and simple, and Ukraine's right to exist as a people. Whoever you are, wherever you live, whatever you believe, that should not, that should make your blood run cold. Today, Vladimir Putin announced an escalation of the war. He is mobilizing 300,000 additional troops to join the front lines in Ukraine after some heavy losses there. Putin also threatened, appeared to threaten nuclear retaliation if Kyiv continues its efforts to reclaim territory taken by Russian troops.